Let's study k-means clustering in detail. You have studied k-means clustering in the MLAI module. So by applying the knowledge we learned just now about clustering, different type, types of clustering, you can figure out that k-means clustering is a center-based and a partitional clustering approach. So the input to a k-means clustering will be a set of n data points from x1 to xn. And we also need the number of clusters k. And then for a set C, which stands for centers or centroid, so for a set C from uh, C1 to CK, so that is K cluster centers, let's define a sum of squared error or SSE as the following. So here, the this d x c means the distance from a point x to the closest center among the k centers among the k centroids. Therefore, this means the square of the distance from each point, each input data point to its closest center. And we sum them up, we have the SSE. Therefore, the goal of k-means clustering is to find the C centers or centroids that can minimize the sum of squared error as defined over here. The algorithm we have seen for k-means is called Lloyd's algorithm. In this simple algorithm, we start with k centers chosen uniformly at random from the data points, from the n input data points. And then we do assignment of clusters to each data point and recompute the centroid alternatively. So we will take turn, we do the reassignment and recomputation, and then do another reassignment, do another recomputation until converge. That means until the centroid do not move. So this is an alternating optimization strategy similar to the alternating least square we learned last week in collaborative filtering. The convergence will be determined by a tolerance. So basically, if the centroid is not moving by a very small number specified, for example, 10 to the power minus six or minus 12, then we will consider it to be converged. So there are several limitations for this Lloyd algorithm for k-means. So this algorithm typically will need many iterations to converge. And it is also sensitive to initialization. For example, random initialization can get two centers in the same cluster. And in this case, we will be stuck 
at a local optim optimum. And let's see an example over here. So suppose we have a bunch of data points and uh, we want to find four clusters. Obviously, we have well separated four clusters, right? So it should be an easy job because they are well separated. So let's run the Lloyd algorithm by randomly picking four points. Suppose these, these are the four points that is uh, that had been randomly chosen. And then if we run the Lloyd algorithm on this initialization, eventually we, this will be what we have. So these points will be considered as one cluster with centroid over here. This one is correct, but these two will be considered as two clusters with centroid over here and over here. Right, so this is obviously not a good clustering outcome. And this is because the, the initialization has two initial centroids forced into one cluster. So in this case, we will get stuck over here and cannot recover. So that will lead to an undesirable clustering result. So in the next section, we will look at a scalable k-means variation to see how we can overcome that problem and also make it more scalable.